Chapter 4, Elder Knowledge Dragonrend, as the shout was called, was our best chance at defeating Alduin. The Greybeards initially met Arryn's curiosity on the matter with open hostility. The shout, they said, had no place in the way of the voice, nor did the meddlesome actions of the blades. Arngear warned Arryn against the blades, telling him of how they had led past Dragonborn astray, at least in their eyes. He also refused to discuss the matter of the shout any further, that is until a great thume echoed through the halls of High Hrothgar, interrupting him before he could finish. Looking a bit surprised and shaken, he completely changed his tune, telling us that he could not help us in our endeavor, but there was one who could. High atop the mountain, at the throat of the world, was the head of their order. Parthenax, as he was called, was the wisest and most well-versed of all the Greybeards, and lived in complete and total isolation on the mountain's summit. I would later discover that this Parthenax was actually a great and ancient dragon, who was largely responsible for the ancient Nord's initial defeat of Alduin. The Greybeards gave Arryn one final gift to help him reach the mountain's peak, a shout that let him tame both wind and weather. So off he went to meet Parthenax and learn the secret of Dragonren for himself. When he returned to High Hrothgar, he had a disappointed but determined look. Parthenax unfortunately did not know the shout we sought, although he did have a plan as to how Eren might learn it. The plan would require an Elder Scroll, however. Elder Scrolls were among the most powerful and mysterious relics in all of Nern, more myth than reality, but we had little choice. Without one we would never be able to defeat Alduin, so an Elder Scroll we would find. To this end we set our sights on Winterhold, where we would find the center of all learning in Skyrim, the Mage's College. Hey everybody, Brett from Stardust Gaming here, back with another episode of our Elder Scrolls V Skyrim Let's Play. So, today I have your Blades recruits all uh, decked out and ready to go. Um, we're not going to get to fight alongside them today, however, uh, I would like to go dragon hunting with them in the future. So let me uh, introduce you guys to our newest Blades. Um, I'll do it in the order of voting, so Jack will have to wait. Uh, we'll have to go track down Karnan, I think he's in this room. Where did he go? Oh, he might be sleeping. No, that's somebody else. Uh, it's Esburn. I think he's in the main hall. Let's go find him. Excuse me, Delphine. Ah, here he is. So, first on our list is Karnan Lantern by Phoenix Gaming. He gained 27% of the vote, so he is our first Blade inductee. Uh, you can see he's fully decked out in the blade's armor. He's still wielding his dual elven daggers, but I might try to get him some more legendary weapons than that. In fact, for all three of these characters, I think I want to get them some legendary named weapons. But uh, right now he's got his elven daggers and uh, his bow. So there's Karnan. Now next up we have jack ironforge who we saw briefly a second ago um there he is so he's got his full blades armor on he's also rocking the blade shield and he's got a um akaviri saber on his hip there again i'd like to get them legendary weapons whether i just enchant this weapon and name it or i find them something a little bit better uh that'll remain to be seen but i do want to improve their gear a bit also i'll probably give them um blades armor that's been smithed up to legendary or whatever but uh that'll take me some time before we go dragon hunting though we'll do that and then uh taking the snooze over here is our uh third and final blade this uh was difficult because we actually had a tie for the third spot at least as of me recording this um it was Krarik and uh luke and Cantor tied for third place at 15 percent and since um Sniper Ginger, the uh, the person who submitted Krarik, has been a lot more active than the submitter for Luke and Cantor. I figured I would go ahead and give him the uh, the tiebreaker there. So here is Krarik, sleeping away with his... Uh, apparently he didn't bother to take his battle axe off of his back when he went to sleep. I mean, he's sleeping in full armor too, so that's probably not very comfortable. But those are our three new blades. Um, Delphine's all decked out in her armor as well. But we have some business to do, as you guys heard in that little uh, story in the introduction there. We need to head to the College of Winterhold. So Lydia and Eric will be rolling along with us as we head over there. And uh, yeah, we need to figure out where we can find an Elder Scroll. I don't think that's going to be very easy. 
but I'm sure we'll manage. So uh, while we're journeying over there, I would just like to remind you guys to hit that like button if you are enjoying this series so far and you'd like to see more Skyrim. Um, don't forget to subscribe as well. It's the best way to help the channel grow and the best way to follow along with this series and our story as it goes on. And don't forget to continue to submit your character and uh, build on your characters in the comments. Um, I'll be drawing for uh, new characters every couple episodes or so, introducing one into the story whenever it fits. And so uh, you don't want to miss out on that. Right, so I'm going to turn the AI back on in just a second, and then uh, I'll see you guys in Winterhold. All right, guys, so I figured we'd stop off in Whiterun to sell some stuff, drop off some stuff, get a good night's rest, and then head out to Winterhold in the morning. So I've thrown uh, Dragonbane on the weapon rack here, uh, gotten rid of as many books as I could in my bookshelf, so this thing is nice and full now. I love the way it looks when it's full, especially with this... Uh, book cover retexture. They just look so much more interesting. And then uh, I finally managed to get this place fully decorated, so um, I went with the children's bedroom here because I figured we would uh, adopt Lucia the first opportunity we got, get her off the streets, let her sleep somewhere warm, and uh, why is there raw rabbit meat on the floor of my kitchen? That's not good. So we're fully decorated now, and again, upstairs we still have the Sword of White Run looking so good on that weapon rack. And uh, I still need to figure out what shield I want to put up here. I want to replace it. I don't want these dirty looking iron greatswords up there either. But that's a matter for another day. So I'm going to get some rest and then we're going to head to uh, the college. Okay, so we're getting a nice early start here. The sun's just coming up. Still plenty of fog on the mountains. I just love the way that volumetric fog looks. And then uh, we're going to pay the caravan driver to take us to Winterhold wherever he is. Hopefully he's not sleeping somewhere. Need something? Uh yeah, I'd like to hire your carriage. Where do you want to go? I would like to go to Winterhold. Climb and back and we'll be off. Okay, I will. Oh there once was a hero named Ragnar the Red who came riding to right run from old Rorik's head. Hey, I didn't pay you to sing. All right, so here we are, Winterhold, visiting for the first time. Let's see what's going on here. You're not bringing home any. And you'd have me do what? Join the college and prance about casting spells all day? Don't just walk away from me. What do you think you're going? Huh? To the end for drinks. You couldn't possibly be the Dragonborn of Legend, could you? No, that's not me. Do you guys get much business here? The town seems pretty quiet. Very funny. I'm sure you've noticed that Winterhold isn't exactly overflowing with people. So I'll sell whatever I can. If it's worth putting a price on, you can bet I'll do it. I've been burned a few times, made a few bad deals, but mostly I come out on top. You said something about getting the worst of a deal? Yeah, it was stupid of me. I shouldn't have believed the story and just refused the trade. But I didn't, and now I'm stuck with this worthless junk. What's the story behind that? Some line about this claw thing in Ingol Barrow. He said it was worth more than its weight in gold if I took it back there. Something about placing it back in Ingol's chamber, I don't know. What was I thinking? Even if it were true, I'm not setting foot in some ancient tomb filled with who knows what. Well, I could look into it for you. I don't even care anymore. You want to check it out? Fine. I'll sell you the thing for 50 gold and then it's your problem. Sounds like a deal. Fine, here you go. You get killed on account of this thing, it's not my fault. Got it? But I suppose if it does actually turn out to be worth something, let me know, will you? Okay. And what? You think that'll solve all your problems? Oh, you're still talking to your but it's worth a try. husband who's like halfway down the street. You ask me, not enough of Winterhold fell off into the sea. Yeah? Well, here, have a drink. Ale or mead? Uh, I do have some ale. Hmm. 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 Okay. Well, that's one less favorite quest for me to do later. Um, right, so we were headed to the college, weren't we? So the college is right here. I guess I'll just deal with all this and see you guys when we're inside. Alright, so here we are in the Arcanium. Let's talk to 
this grumpy old orc here. I don't want to see you treating any of these books poorly. Are we clear? This is quite the impressive library you got here. A mage is only as good as what he knows. I try to make sure as much knowledge is available as possible. We've been keeping this collection since the second era. Books have come and gone during that time, but it's mostly intact. Sounds like you take your work pretty seriously. Life, of course I do. If I didn't, red. most of these books would have been burned to ashes or dissolved to nothing before the third era. Mages need to be reminded to be careful around research materials. Right, well, I'm in the market for an Elder Scroll. And what do you plan to do with it? Do you even know what you're asking about? Or are you just someone's errand boy? Of course I know. Do you happen to have one? You think that even if I did have one here, I would let you see it? It would be kept under the highest security. The greatest thief in the world wouldn't be able to lay a finger on it. Uh, what about the Dragonborn of Legend? What about... Wait, are you... Were you the one the Greybeards were calling? I'll bring everything we have on them, but it's not much. So don't get your hopes up. It's mostly lies, leavened with rumor and conjecture. Fight. Bam. Name drop for the win. Alright, let's see what he's got. And you two... I don't want to hear anything out of you. Here you go. Try not to spill anything on them. I will certainly try. So what do we got here? Effects of the Elder Scrolls. Let's see. Elder Scrolls entail a certain hazard in their very reading. Uh, don't read them unless you're a moth priest. Blah, blah, blah. Uh, they still have to do rituals or they go blind. I can't take it. Okay. Ruminations on the Elder Scrolls. Ah, here we go. Blah, blah, blah. This guy's crazy. We're going to have to go find him. Okay, so now that we've checked those out, we need to ask him, uh, him being, uh, what's his name, Urag over here? We need to ask him about that weird, incom incomprehensible book. So let's see what he knows about it. have gone into assembling this collection. It's going to stay pristine, understand? This Ruminations book is complete nonsense. Aye, uh, that's the work of Septimus Cygnus. He's the world's master of the nature of Elder Scrolls. But, well, he's been gone for a long while. Too long. Do you know where he went? Somewhere up north, in the ice fields. He said he found some old Dwemer artifact, but well... That was years ago. Ugh. Haven't heard from him since. Alright, so it sounds like we need to go find this guy. I guess we'll uh, start heading in that direction. I know he's out somewhere in the icy wastes of the, uh, the Sea of Ghosts, or at least uh, very near to the Sea of Ghosts, so that's where we're headed. Alright guys, so we're going to find Septimus in true Skyrim fashion here. We're just going to pick a direction and go. That's one of the things I love about Elder Scrolls games and, well, Bethesda games in general, um, because Fallout is very similar in that regard, is that you can, oh, I missed the ice right there. You can just literally pick a direction and go wherever you want and not have to worry about hitting, you know, artificial barriers or anything like that. You literally just, you know, explore as you would in real life, and that's something that very few games allow you to do. Um, you know, Skyrim, well, The Elder Scrolls, and uh, Fallout being some of the very few. Oh, some Nern Root. Um, I haven't played, I'm not a huge fan of the Witcher series. I know a lot of people are, but I really don't enjoy the combat. Um, I just, I don't like it for some reason. And I know that's not a popular opinion. I know a lot of people really enjoy the combat in that game. But I just, I don't really enjoy them. And I, I don't think they're bad games, it's just not really for me. And uh, I don't know how far those will let you explore in that regard. I, I know that the The Witcher 3 
Wild Hunt had a pretty big expansive world, but from what I understood, it didn't allow you to explore it in the same way that um, the Elder Scrolls games do. It was um, a little bit less, what's the word, like organic in the way you move throughout the, the world in The Witcher. Which is fine, I mean, to each their own, but I don't know, I like this. I like being able to just go wherever I want. Like, every part of this map is fair game, and I really, really like that. So, uh, here is Septimus's little hidey hole. Let's go see what's happening here. Alright. Where's he at? Ouch. Dig, dwemer in the beyond. I'll know your lost unknown and rise to your depths. Uh, excuse me? When the top level was built, eh? no more could be placed. It was and is the maximal apex. What brings you to this remote place? Ah, the ice entombs the heart. The bane of Kagranak and Degothur. Why is it always so cold? To harness it is to know the fundaments. The Dwemer lockbox hides it from me. The Elder Scroll gives insight deeper than the Deep Ones, though, to bring about the opening. You have an Elder Scroll? Here? I have seen enough to know their fabric, the warp of air, the weft of time. But no, it is not in my possession. So... Where is this scroll? Here. Well, here as in this plane. Mondas, Tamriel, nearby. Relatively speaking. <laughs> On the cosmological scale, well, it's all nearby. Fair enough. Can you help me get this Elder Scroll? One block lifts the other. Septimus will give what you want. But you must bring him something in return. Uh, what would you like in return? You see this masterwork of the Dwemer, deep inside their greatest knowings. Septimus is clever among men, but he is but an idiot child compared to the dullest of the Dwemer. Lucky then they left behind their own way of reading the Elder Scrolls. In the depths of Black Reach, one yet lies. Have you heard of Black Reach? Cast upon where Dremor City slept, the yearning spire hidden learnings kept. <laughs> where is this Black Reach? Under deep, below the dark, the hidden keep, Tower Mzark. Of Pan. The point of puncture, of first entry, of the tap. Delve to its limits, and Black Reach lies just beyond. But not all can enter there. Only Septimus knows the hidden key to loose the lock, to jump beneath the deathly rock. So, how do I get in? Two things I have for you. Two shapes. One edged, one round. The round one for tuning. Dwemer music is soft and subtle, and needed to open their cleverest gates. The edged lexicon, or inscribing. To us, a hunk of metal. To the Dwemer, a full library of knowings, but empty. Find Mazark and its sky dome. The machinations there will read the scroll and lay the lore upon the cube. Trust Septimus. He knows you can know. Okay, I think I understood. So we need to find Ulfdand. I guess we'll head that way. I can't take those. What's this? Just a regular jug? Uh, there's the ramp. Okay, so let's get out of here and go find this Dwemer ruin. 
where we can hopefully find the Elder Scroll. Okay, so we're heading out of Winterhold. And we're traveling southwest-ish. Um, I don't know what the best route to take here is, so we're just going to kind of wing it, and hopefully we end up in more or less the right direction. Uh, it's very stormy out, but I think we'll be all right. Something just tried to attack me. Now, would I be better off trying to cut through the mountain pass here? Uh, it would appear that I would be, unless I plan to go all the way around it. So, I guess that's what we'll do. I sure hope I'm headed the right direction here. This is one part of Skyrim I'm not entirely that familiar with. There's a lot of hostiles around. I'm going to try to avoid them. Is that dragon going to leave me alone? No, it would appear that he is not. Well, that's one down. Where'd that dragon get off to? Oh, the ice wraith is more interesting than me, it looks like. Okay, let's let's try this a little bit differently, because that's not working. Gotcha. Okay. I think the dragon is leaving. So, we'll be on our way. Somehow, uh, Lydia and Eric fell pretty far behind, but I think we'll be alright. God, it's just like all snow. Like, that's, that's one thing that people seem to knock Skyrim for, and, you know, Skyrim's not perfect, not by any means, but, oh, another one? Uh, the map is a bit smaller than I think some people would like. I mean, it's a, it's a big game, but... Obviously, they've had to condense stuff to, you know, fit everything in. But when you when you wander into these parts of the map, it really doesn't feel condensed at all. I mean, like, you can look in any direction here and not really see anything. At least not anything in terms of, like, you know, there's no cities around here that you can see. There's no villages. It's just snowy wastes as far as you can see but you know it's really not that big it looks like we're coming up on Alfden now yep so we just need to find our way in hmm well let's investigate these shacks They don't look like they've been uh, visited recently. This one is completely falling apart. Let's see, what do we have in here? Damn. Nope. Oh, I had it. I was so close. Huh. I don't know why it's doing that. No. God. I don't think I've ever had this much difficulty within the death lock. There we go. I'll take all of that. What do we have here? Ancestors in the Dwemer. Expedition Manifest. That might be interesting. We've managed to secure the site and hold off any others who may try to steal our discovery so far. Especially those from the collapse of from the College of Winterhold, who seem to think that the glory of exploring every ruin should be theirs alone. The crew for our expedition is as follows. Sola, myself, expedition leader. Umana, my constant companion and bodyguard. Vali, a mage not associated with Winterhold. Took some time to find. Endrast, a fellow explorer of some local renown. Yag, a great brood of a woman hired to keep the rest of the labor in check. Jadar and Jazar, two Khajiit brothers, hired his labor. Need a couple more laborers. Getting through the ice is proving difficult. We've set up shelter and scouted the area. The small ruins on the lower plateau of the glacier don't seem connected to the main structure, and we haven't managed to find 
away into the tower parapet we found here. Yag mentioned spotting a fissure in the glacial wall that may lead into the ruins, so we're going to try to find a way to get down there with the gear. Looks like a storm is coming. Okay. So, there was an expedition here. Um, it seems that they have abandoned this place. They're, uh... Oh, hello. Ouch. <laughs> okay. I didn't get my arrow back, unfortunately. Um, it looks like we need to head this way to get inside. Or it's below us, actually. So, we need to make our way in... Huh, I wonder if we could just jump down. Whew. Oh, we could've just walked around. Okay. <laughs> um, right, so we'll follow these bridges and catwalks along, and... Be very careful not to fall down. And here's the entrance. Okay, guys, so I'd prefer to do this whole dungeon in a single shot, just so we don't have, like, issues of continuity and things like that. So I'm actually going to end the episode here. I think it's going to be a little bit short, because uh, I think a lot of what I've recorded so far is going to get trimmed. But, uh, yeah, so in the next episode, we'll complete this dungeon all the way through Black Reach and Retrieving the Elder Scroll. And then uh, in the episode beyond that, we'll go from there. But anyways, thank you guys so much for watching. I had a great time playing some Skyrim with you guys, and I look forward to seeing you back here and seeing your characters in the next episode.